Hi students and teachers. Last week we talked a little bit about what the Bible is, so I wanted to start this time by showing you a few of my favorite Bibles. Uh, first up, this is my children's Bible. This is a good news Bible, which just means that it's one written in a way that is easier for children to understand. Um, it's got pictures in it along the way, um, stuff like that. Um, and in the front here of mine, I got this when I was a kid because you can see a bunch of stuff that I put in there. I have those stickers that I got from my Sunday school teacher. Um, some of those are for memory verses, verses that I read and learned and then said back to the teacher without looking. Um, you can see there's places here that gold stars used to be. They've fallen off. Um, but those were for bringing my Bible with me, remembering to do that when I came to Sunday school. Um, this one is called a student Bible. It is not the one I had when I was a teenager, but it's very similar. Um, and these come with extra things written for um, teenagers to help them uh, interact with the scriptures at their uh, reading level and their age. Um, there's one here I have called The Message. This is actually called The Message Remix. Um, I love the message. It's actually called a paraphrase and not a translation uh, because they really modernize uh, the way it's written and the language that they use. Uh, it's very easy to read and understand. I love quoting from this one if I'm teaching a lesson or uh, preparing a sermon. Um, here is a very fancy looking one. This is a special Bible uh, because my friend Amanda made it. Um, I went to graduate school with her, and several years after that, she started her own company, and it's called She Reads Truth. They have an app on your phone, uh, and they make all sorts of um, books and devotionals and things like that, and then eventually they made this Bible, and it's very nice because Amanda and her co-workers wrote some extra things to help you understand, and then there's um, some art along the way and pretty colors and things, so... Um, she Reads Truth is designed to help women, especially, uh, interact with God through the words of Scripture. So this is a really unique one here. Let me show you this. Um, this is called The Bible Experience. It is an audio recording of the whole Bible. So um, these are on MP3s. Uh, you can listen to them on your phones, your computers, uh, your cars, anywhere where you can listen to music. Um, but it is... Uh, put together by famous African-American celebrities. Um, it is. It was made in 2007, so it's about as old as our 8th graders are, uh, but it still seems really new to me. Uh, but some of the people reading and being the characters in the Bible story are Denzel Washington, Samuel L. Jackson, Angela Bassett, LL Cool J, Common, uh, LeVar Burton, Nick Cannon, Terry Crews, Idris Elba, Monique. See, I know all these names, but the kids might not. But teachers, uh, give me a thumbs up if you know the people I'm talking about. I love, love, love to listen to the Bible and not just read it. Um, this is my most recently purchased Bible somewhere. Oh, here. Uh, this is called the Brick Testament. This is huge very heavy. Um, but as you can see, it tells story from the stories from the Bible using Legos. Any of you guys like playing with Legos? Um, so yeah, this looks inside kind of like a comic book, but um, it's with uh, Lego scenes that this guy has designed to tell you the Bible story very, very creatively. Um, honestly, the Bible I use most often, let me grab my phone over here. Um, the one I use most often is right here. Uh, it's just a Bible app and it's called the Bible Gateway. Um, so yeah, that's my Bible app right there. Um, it's very easy to search for things that you're looking for, to um, go directly to the book and the chapter and the verse, or to change the translation even uh, if you want to do that. Um, so I use this. It's obviously my smallest, easiest to carry around Bible. Um, finally, this is my favorite Bible to use with children's groups. This is called the Jesus Storybook Bible. Some of you may be familiar with this. You may have used this before in class. Um, every story is written so beautifully um, and the illustrations are great, but it brings the Bible stories to life in a way that I've never quite experienced in the same way. Uh, the main thing about it though, as it's called the Jesus Storybook Bible, it connects all the stories along the way to Jesus. 
and we're going to do that as well this year. Um, one of my big goals for this year in religion class is to walk you through the ways in which, yes, the Bible may be a collection of different books and different kinds of writings from different authors, but it's ultimately telling one big story, and that is a story that points us to Jesus. I'm going to read to you from the Jesus Storybook Bible in just a second, but first I have a few questions for you. You all and your teacher can talk about what Bibles you have. Uh, it can be your own Bible or your family's Bibles or a sibling. Uh, if you have a favorite Bible story or a favorite Bible character or verse, I'd love for you to share about that as well. Um, so we're going to pause for a few minutes and I will see you after that. And we're back. Um, I love the way this one starts out. So I'm going to read to you from the beginning of the Jesus Storybook Bible. Uh, it starts uh, with the story of creation, uh, but it has a little bit of an intro before that. Um, this is also for the older grades. I know even though you guys are usually too big to have a picture book read to you, I think you actually can experience picture books in a way that you didn't when you were a child. So I think you will um, hear this story in an even deeper and more meaningful way uh, than some of the younger ones will. It's called The Story and the Song is how it begins. God wrote, I love you. He wrote it in the sky and on the earth and under the sea. He wrote his message everywhere. Because God created everything in his world to reflect him like a mirror, to show us what he is like, to help us know him, to make our hearts sing. The way a kitten chases her tail, the way red poppies grow wild, the way a dolphin swims. And God put it into words, too, and wrote it in a book called the Bible. Now, some people think the Bible is a book of rules telling you what you should and shouldn't do. The Bible certainly does have some rules in it. They show you how life works best. But the Bible isn't mainly about you and what you should be doing. It's about God and what He has done. Other people think the Bible is a book of heroes showing you people you should copy. The Bible does have some heroes in it. But as you'll soon find out, most of the people in the Bible aren't heroes at all. They make some big mistakes, sometimes on purpose. They get afraid and run away. At times, they are downright mean. No, the Bible isn't a book of rules or a book of heroes. The Bible is most of all a story. It's an adventure story about a young hero who comes from a far country to win back his lost treasure. It's a love story about a brave prince who leaves his palace, his throne, everything, to rescue the one he loves. It's like the most wonderful of fairy tales that has come true in real life. You see, the best thing about this story is, it's true. There are lots of stories in the Bible, but all the stories are telling one big story. The story of how God loves his children and comes to rescue them. It takes the whole Bible to tell this story. And at the center of the story, there is a baby. Every story in the Bible whispers his name. He is like the missing piece in a puzzle, the piece that makes all the other pieces fit together, and suddenly you can see a beautiful picture. And this is no ordinary baby. This is the child upon whom everything would depend. This is the child who would one day... But wait. Our story starts where all good stories start, right at the very beginning. In the beginning, there was nothing. Nothing to hear, nothing to feel, nothing to see. Only emptiness and darkness and nothing but nothing. But God was there, and God had a wonderful plan. I'll take this emptiness, God said, and I'll fill it up. Out of the darkness, I'm going to make light. And out of the nothing, I'm going to make everything. 
Like a mommy bird flutters her wings over her eggs to help her babies hatch, God hovered over the deep, silent darkness. He was making life happen. God spoke. That's all. And whatever he said, it happened. God said, hello, light, and light shone into the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. You're good, God said, and they were. Then God said, hello, sea, hello, sky, and a great space opened up wide and deep and high. You're good, God said, and they were. Then God said, hello, land, and there, splashing up through the oceans, came cliffs, mountains, sandy beaches. You're good, God said, and they were. Hello, trees, God said, hello, grass and flowers and everything everywhere burst into life. He made buds bud, shoots shoot, flowers flower. You're good, God said, and they were. Hello stars, God said, hello sun, hello moon. And whizzing into the darkness came fiery globes spinning around and around whirling orange and purple and golden planets. You're good, God said, and they were. Hello, birds, God said, and with a fluttering and flapping and chirping and singing, birds filled the skies. Hello, fish, God said, and with a darting and dashing and wriggling and splashing, fish filled the seas. You're good, God said, and they were. Then God said, hello, animals, and everyone came out to play. The earth was filled with noisy noises, growling and gobbling and snapping and snorting and happy skerfuffling. You're good, God said, and they were. God saw all that he had made and he loved them, and they were lovely because he loved them. But God saved the best for last. From the beginning, God had a shining dream in his heart. He would make people to share his forever happiness. They would be his children, and the world would be their perfect home. So God breathed life into Adam and Eve. When they opened their eyes, the first thing they ever saw was God's face. And when God saw them, he was like a new dad. You look like me, he said. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever made. God loved them with all of his heart, and they were lovely because he loved them. And Adam and Eve joined in the song of the stars and the streams and the wind and the trees, the wonderful song of love to the one who made them. Their hearts were filled with happiness, and nothing ever made them sad or lonely or sick or afraid. God looked at everything he had made. Perfect, he said, and it was. But all the stars and the mountains and oceans and galaxies and everything were nothing compared to how much God loved his children. He would move heaven and earth to be near them, always. Whatever happened, whatever it cost him, he would always love them. And so it was that the wonderful love story began. So before I say anything about this, your teacher has some questions for you all to answer. So I'll be right back after you talk about it and after you listen to what your other classmates have to say about it. So once again, let's pause. I mentioned how everything in this Bible points us to Jesus. So I'd like to do just that as we talk a little bit more about this creation story. If you jump all the way forward to the Gospel of John in the New Testament, it starts like this in verse 1 of chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, 
Through him all things were made. Now before I go any further, when it says the word, this is with a capital W at the beginning. So they're not just talking about words that we speak. This is a special name that the author has given to Jesus. So let me read that again, but I'm going to say Jesus instead of the word. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Jesus was with God in the beginning. Through Jesus all things were made. Okay, now I'll keep going. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Or as the Good News Version says, the word became a human and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So this book of the Bible, John, comes way later than the creation story in the first chapter of the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. But it tells us that Jesus was around before the world was created and that Jesus was with God creating the world together. Now it's very confusing when you hear that part that says Jesus was God and Jesus was with God. That's something I can't always wrap my head around and we're going to have far more chances in the future to talk about what that means together. But how amazing is it that Jesus, who becomes a human much later in the story, was there from the beginning. And that if we believe in him and receive him, or let him dwell in our hearts and influence how we live, what we say, what we do, how we treat each other, that we will become children of God through that. Now, I'm certainly not God, but I do have children, and I love those children with all my heart. So imagine how much greater God's love is for all of us when God calls us his children. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I will see you again next week. Thanks.